We learned in the last video that the range, while easy to find, is not a very fine-tuned measure of spread um, because all it tells you really is the distance from the min to the max. So we want a different measure of spread, something that will do a better job for us, and that is what standard deviation is. And we're going to build our way to that with a couple examples. So the first thing we need to think about is what is deviation? Deviation is the difference between the observation and the mean. Simple as that. So if I want the deviation for the person that scored 60, and I've labeled it right here in green for you, so that deviation would be 60 take away 74. There you have it, which is negative 14. Now I want to do it again, but for a score of 90. So if a student score is 90, we would take away 90 minus 74, and that would give us a deviation of 26. Oops, sorry, 16, my fault, 16. Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, first of all, this one right here is negative 14. And the one over on the right, the blue one, is positive 16, which leads us to the conclusion that if your deviation is positive, it means you're on the right of the mean. And if your deviation is negative, it means you're to the left of the mean or below the mean. So let me type that up. There we have it. So positive deviation means the data point is above the mean, um, to the right on the number line. And then negative deviation means that it's below the mean which would be to the left on the number line. We don't have to write right and left, but that's what it means. So positive means above, and negative means below, right? Okay, now notice what's gonna happen. If you did this for all the data points, we just did two. We did this one right here at 60 and this one right here at 90. But if you did it for 60, 61, 62, 64, 65, 70, all of these, what would happen is the negative ones over here, that's all the ones on the left, and the positive ones over here, that's all the ones on the right, would balance each other out because the mean is the balance point, right? Since the mean is that balance point, that means that your deviations above and below are always going to add up to zero, always. So that's a problem for us because deviation is what we want, right? We want to know how are these different data points inside this data set varying from the mean. But the problem is that the deviations will always make zero. So to fix that problem, what we're going to do is we're going to turn them all positive. And we turn them all positive by squaring them. If you see in the formula right here, they're all squared. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to use that squaring feature to turn the deviations, because that's what these are. The formula looks more complicated than it really is. You take your x value, like 60, take away your mean, like 74, and you that's your deviation. Then you square it to turn it positive, and then you add them all up and divide by how many there are, and then take the square root of it to undo the squaring. If you want sigma, which is the population standard deviation. If you want the sample standard deviation, you don't divide by how many there are, you divide by n minus 1, which is your sample size take away 1. That adjusts for the fact that you have a sampling error. And we'll talk more about that later. It's called your degrees of freedom, and it's going to become a little bit important to you in chapter 9 and 10 and 11. Okay, But standard deviation, these two formulas right here, which are the standard deviation formulas, they're the measure of the average, i.e. standard, distance from the mean, standard deviation, average distance from the mean for an entire data set. So it's a measure of how spread out your data set is. The larger your standard deviation is, the more spread out you're going to have be. All right. So again, let's, let's look here. So there are two flavors of standard deviation, just like there were two flavors of the mean, namely the population standard deviation and the sample standard deviation. So the population standard deviation is sigma, and the sample standard deviation is s. And there those are. Now keep in mind, the calculator is going to find both of them. Well, I'll talk about it down here, but the calculator finds both of them. Um, and so you are going to have to know, my data set was a sample, I'll use S. Or my data was a population, so I'm going to use Sigma. So you use whichever one is more appropriate for your data set. Speaking of which, that leads me to the other point, which is we are never going to calculate this by hand. Never, never, never. You're welcome. Um, it's, it's not really worth our time. You saw basically what it is. It's the deviations squared, add them all up, divide by how many there are, or how many there are minus one, and then take the square root of it. 
Um, your calculator finds both of them, and I'm going to show you that when we are going to do it down here for this stats exam. And then the standard deviation is always positive, of course, because you squared it. So you turned all the deviations positive, therefore the whole thing is going to be positive. It's not resistant to outliers or skewing, skewed right, skewed left. It's not resistant to any of that, primarily because it's distance from the mean, but the mean was not resistant to outliers either. So the mean gets pulled towards the tail, so the standard deviation will get pulled larger if there are outliers or if it's skewed. And then the sigma one, this one right here, is called unadjusted because the one on the right is adjusted. That's why the denominator is n minus one. It's adjusting for something called sampling error, um, namely that when you uh, have a sample, it's never a perfect representation of the population. And there's more to it than that, but that's all we're going to cover in this particular course. So when you divide by n minus one, you're sort of adjusting for the fact that it's a sample. So the sigma one is unadjusted. So you're not changing because it isn't a sample, it's the whole population. So when you read a computer output, they'll call the one that's on the left unadjusted. Now both of these have the same units as your original data set. So if your original data set is in dollars, then your standard deviation is dollars. If your original data set is inches, standard deviation is inches. And at this point, we need an interpretation for this. So the way you can think of it is it's your give or take from the mean, roughly. There's a lot more going on than that, but that's where we're going to start off with, which is it's your plus or minus, it's your give or take. You don't expect to exactly be the mean. What you expect is to be around the mean. And the standard deviation is giving us a measure for around the mean, right? How close to the mean do we expect to be in a symmetric data set in particular? Um, it works less well or not well at all, depending on how badly the skewed data set is, if it's skewed. Um, but if it's symmetric, then it's roughly the give or take from the mean. All right, so how do we calculate it? Well, it's the same thing that you do when you want to calculate the mean or the median. So you go to stat, you go to edit, you enter your data right here, which we have. Then you go to stat, calculate, number one, one variable stat. L1 is your list, so go down to calculate and press enter. And there they are. It's the third and the fourth thing, or no, excuse me, fourth and the fifth. Sx, which is 13.968 and some change, and sigma x, which is 13.251. Those are the two standard deviations. One of them is a population standard deviation, and one is a sample standard deviation. So let me type those up. There those two are. And you can see that they have the same unit as your original data set. So since these were exam scores in percents, then your standard deviations are also in percents. Oops, except that bottom one's an S, not a sigma. Sorry. All right, now which would be more appropriate for the situation? Well, since this was a sample, right? Since it's a sample, then the more appropriate one would be the sample standard deviation, which is S. since these data were from a sample. So now let's interpret the mean and the standard deviation. So let's remind ourselves what the mean was. Up at the top, you can see it's 74 right there. Now the calculator, by the way, never gives you a mu symbol. So you just have to know this was X bar, not mu or vice versa, because it'll always call it X bar. So if you were a student in this class, you would expect to get 74% on your exam, give or take, and I'm gonna round this to 14% just for our own purposes here, because this is really close to 14%. All right, so let me type that up. There, we would expect a random student in the stats class to receive a 74% on that exam, give or take 14%. Now realize what you're making. You're making a window where you expect a student score to fall. Excuse me. Window where you expect a student score to fall. And what that would be would be 74 plus or minus 14. So if you take 74 minus 14, sorry, 74 minus 14, that gets you 60. 74 plus 14, that gets you 88. So you'd think that there's going to fall somewhere between those two scores. Okay. That's what you're doing when you create that give or take. Now, it doesn't mean that no students are beyond that, right? For example, we know there are students above 88. It's giving you a rough window where you expect students to fall. I should say that, an approximate 
window where you expect student scores to fall. Now let's stop right there and then I'll come back in the next video to discuss variance. So I'll see you then.